Rucham Aboyim. Thank you for coming. Last week we finished with a uh, topic about teachers, things, people, friends, and uh, otherwise that teach us and help us to uh, become better in what we need and how we learn. So this week we're going to kind of continue with that theme. And I mean, the greatest teacher of all in reality is the Torah. On the other hand, the Holy Baal Shem Tov tells us that everything that we see, as I mentioned last week, will teach us something. Everything, everything about the world, uh, there's something there to teach us and bring us closer to God. But right at the, uh, just before Pesach, for the Seders, and there's a uh, part of the Seder, I think, that a lot of people know, uh, the Dayenu. Dai, Dayenu, everybody sings it. Uh, even people that aren't religious, I think, know the tune. And Dayenu ba basically means it would have been good enough. That would have been enough. And one of the Dayenu say that if God had brought us to Har Sinai, if God had brought us to Mount Sinai, but had not given us the Torah, that would have been enough. Which is very strange. So if we didn't have the Torah, how would we find this instruction manual? How would we learn what it is that God wants us to know? And the answer given by the Medrash is really that everything that we need to know is in nature. That if you look at animals and wildlife, we find many things that they will teach us about what God expects from us. How do we see that? In Pirkei Avot, The Ethics of the Fathers, Rabbi Yehuda ben Tamus said, Be bold as a leopard, light as an eagle, swift as a deer, and strong as a lion to carry out the will of your Father in heaven. So what he's saying in essence is, why is a leopard bold? For us to know that when we serve God, we shouldn't be embarrassed, that we should have the strength of conviction to be able to say what we need to say, do what we need to do, wear the clothes we need to wear. Um, many times a person's embarrassed putting on a yarmulke, wearing tzitzit. You'd be surprised just being in an airport and putting on tefillin, that what an impression you make. But for the person doing it, you'd need to be a little bold because no one likes standing out. But if you're in the middle of an airport and you stop to put on your talus and tefillin, you, of course, draw stairs. But you never know that one of those stairs becomes someone who, because of your boldness, all of a sudden thinks that, wow, you know, I'm a Jew, and maybe I should be doing that also. And it creates something within him, stirs something. Light as an eagle. Again, part of life, and that's what, again, Pirkei Elvis tells us, the more stuff you have, the more you have to carry, the more you have to watch. Smart person travels light. All you need is those necessities. In fact, it's, I mean, today we have an overabundance of everything, which causes us to carry a lot of things. We travel very heavy. Um, I, my wife and I always joke, I may leave my children with a bit of money. I don't know if it's enough for all the stuff we have in our house that they're going to have to get rid of and go through, because um, most of us travel pretty heavy. But when in reality, do we need all of that? And the truth of the matter is, when you fall through the ice, and you're trying to save yourself. Anything that's important at that moment is important. Everything else you can do without. It's not a big deal. So we see, again, light as an eagle to be able to soar and to be above everything, again, against the mores and against the, 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 the current of societies, to have that kind of ability to be above it all. Swift as a deer. And again, a person has to have alacrity. You know, it's interesting that when it comes to going to a synagogue or going to a study pro 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 uh, session, um, we always let someone else go first, and, you know, there's no rush. Uh, we'll get there, you know. God's, all the, God's there all the time. What's, what's the hurry? When it comes to the kiddish to go downstairs and eat, then all of a sudden everybody wants to be the first in line, and they want to get down there right away. We Again, we have our priorities mixed up. So a person should be swift as a deer to do the will of your Father in heaven. That you should see every deed, every good deed that you have the ability to do, do with an alacrity. Imagine if there was $100,000 laying on the floor and the first one that gets to it. You're not going to let someone else pass you up. You're going to want to get there first to pick it up to, put it in your pocket, to take it. <clears throat> and we should see the mitzvahs, which are worth much more than 100000 
if we really understood the worth of these little, it's interesting, stop and think about it. Diamonds are, uh, uh, especially a very perfect diamond is worth a fortune, but it's very small compared to other types of wealth. And yet the amount of wealth that it, you have, and that's why Jews in many countries became diamond merchants, because they could take the wealth with them and hide it and take it from country to country without being seen. Because really by tradition, Jews, as we see in the Torah, Jews are farmers. A lot of the laws in the Torah deal with farming. When the Jews came into the land of Israel, <clears throat> that's basically what they were, farmers. But again, we've been expelled from all countries in the world, and therefore we've had to travel light and become professionals at the same time. And strong is the lion. <clears throat> again, it's not a physical strength. It's the ability to be able to, again, stand your ground, for people to know that even though you're supposed to have humility, but at the same time you have strength of character. And you're willing to stand up for what you believe in. That, that, you know, that's using it in a proper way. So from these four things that Pirkei Avo says, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> that we can learn, again, boldness and traveling light and alacrity and, again, strength of character. And if we look more into nature, look at an ant. From an ant, we learn many different things. Ants are industrious. They're always working. But once one ant touches something, no other ant will take it. Honesty is what ants teach us. And at the same time, they leave no ants behind. If an ant dies, they'll try to take the body back. Again, which one of the biggest mitzvahs we have is called the, um, a mace mitzvah that even if a Kohen Gadol who cannot defile himself finds a dead body in the field, he has, to, he has to bury that body. He has to defile himself. For he can't defile himself for his mother and father, but yet for a body that he finds. So again, these are things we learn even from an ant. From a cat, again, a cat is very modest with its excrement and how it, how it handles things that are of a negative nature. Dogs, very loyal. If we learn loyalty from a dog, a dog makes you feel good. I mean, as we see, dogs have the ability. They are caretakers for people who are sick, for people who are blind. In uh, old folks' homes with uh, war veterans, people that have become despondent have been brought back by this loyalty and this warmth of true giving for dogs. Camel. From a camel, one learns modesty. A camel does not copulate in public, that they, they only wait for someplace private. They will not do it while they're being watched. Again, something that we learn again from them. My wife, uh, who was into frogs, um, you know, it's amazing. Uh, you know, I think I've bought her one for at least one frog every week. I've known her, and we've been married for 46 years. So we've got quite a bit of frogs in the house. I think she came up with the acronym. Frogs stand for forever rely on God. And uh, from frogs we learn, frogs only jump forward. They do not jump backwards. Then in life we need to know that. Always move forward. You know, I always tell people that you should study every day three sentences, hopefully in the morning or at least in the evening, hopefully twice a day. And people look at three sentences, that's it? And the answer is yes. Because if you do three, number one is you may read a book. But number two that if it's only the way you lean, when you fall, you fall forward. In life, you're either going forward or backwards. I always say that life is much like a boat in contrast to a car. A car has forward gear and a reverse gear, but it has a park. And you can put the car in park and nobody steals it. It'll be there. It's not going anywhere. It'll stay in that place. But we always compare Torah to Mayim, to water. And a boat only has two gears, forward and reverse. And when you put a boat in neutral, it always moves back to shore. It always goes backwards. And so too in life. If you're not actively moving forward, you can be sure that you are passively moving backwards. And this is why if you read at least three sentences every day, hopefully in the morning and then before you go to work, before you start your day, and then in the evening before you go to sleep, even if you travel, just three sentences. 
you're at least moving in a forward direction, and it's not passive. You're doing it with an action. So also from frogs, it's interesting. There were three great rabbis, three prophets, Hananiah, Mishal, and Nazariah. They, were, they lived in the time of the Vulchanesser, the second of the destruction of the first temple. And they were given the choice of serving an idol or going into a fiery furnace and dying. And what they did is they looked into the Torah and there they saw that the frogs, when the second plague was brought, was the plague of frogs, that all the frogs died at the end of the seven days, except the frogs that jumped into the ovens of the Egyptians, which was certain death. But because they jumped into the ovens of the Egyptians and they were willing to give their life up for God, for the Kiddush Hashem, those frogs survived. And Hananiah, Mishra, and Nazariah learned from those frogs and they allowed themselves to be thrown into the fiery furnace. And all three of them walk, walked out alive, totally unscathed. A dove. A dove from a dove, we learn monogamy. That once a dove mates, it mates for life. And again, we learn that's why our relationship with God Almighty is that of a dove. Because again, we are his nation and he is our God, only one. But it's interesting, why did I choose the lecture in the first place? I live on a lake. And there's something I saw, and it always, it, it kind of wonder why I see it all the time. It's geese. You hear them. You see them. They're a bit of a nuisance. And they're very regimented in how they fly. And they're there in the spring, and they leave in the fall. And I always wondered, what is there about the geese? So I looked it up, and what I read was, it's very interesting, geese who are highly sociable animals are able to cooperate with one another like ducks, geese travel in a V formation. Flying in this way is beneficial to the whole flock as it facilitates ease of flight because it adds at least 71%, that's important, 71% greater flying range than would otherwise be the case if each goose flew alone. The flapping of the wings of one goose generates is uplift for the goose behind it. Geese swap places at the front position of the V when the lead bird becomes tired. When a goose falls out of formation, it suddenly feels the drag and resistance of trying to go it alone and quickly puts itself back into formation to take advantage of the lifting power of the bird in front. The geese behind honk, all that noise, why? To encourage those up in front to maintain the speed. 71. You know what 71 is? The Jewish High Supreme Court. We believe there are 70 nations in the world, in God. The, the, the nation of Israel, God's chosen nation, is the 71st. I mean, wh how do you come up with the number 71? should have been 70% or whatever, but 71. Again, this alludes to all that we have in Torah. No, 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 nothing's an accident. And again, the fact that when they're in a group, and that's our whole thing of Judaism, is octos, being unit, unified, one group, they're able to fly this much further, 71%, by being together. The importance, again, in nature we see of being together as a unit. Any nation that is not unified is weak. Any nation that is strong is a nation that's unified. And the honking, each one telling the other person to be better, to try harder, that you're doing a good job, keep up the good work. You know, everything has a good purpose. Everything that you do is, is, is you know, keep, keep it up. That it's so important. And as I've mentioned before, a trainer tells you, hey, you did it good, you know, keep up. You, you push a little bit harder. All that honking that seems to be such a bother to us is really one geese telling the other to keep it up, to do a good job. And when one gets a little tired, someone else takes the front. And that's what we need to do. And looking at nature, the great teacher, that even if we didn't have the Torah, Dayenu, it would have been enough just to go to Mount Sinai and know there's a God in the world and look into nature and he would show us through all of these examples and many, many more of just how there's a God in the world and from nature itself we can learn the whole Torah. God bless, thank you, and have a great Shabbos.